Hello, girls, guys, or otherwise. This is Rich, and welcome to another Terror Talk Tuesday. This um, this month's re deck review and reveal is the Saints and Mystics reading cards. This is an Oracle deck by Andreas. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce the name on there. We're going to just go right like that. So... Wonderful looking deck um, from the pictures and whatnot. Let's go ahead and bring you down. I'm not going to do the um, the picture in picture look because of all the issues I was having with the phone and whatnot. So I am going to go ahead and just flip you guys down like I used to, and we're going to go from there. So let's go ahead and go on down to the nether regions. Okay, so. Here we have the Saints and Mystics reading cards. Um, let's see if we can get... No, that's going to give too much light. Okay. Too much glare. Okay. So, this is, again, by Andreas um, In Ingresia. I I'm not sure, and I am probably am pronouncing that incorrectly. Let's get the Rider Waite Smith out of the way. This comes in a little magnetic box. Wonderful. This is produced by Rockpool Publishing. I haven't really heard of Rockpool, um, but a nice, a nice deck overall. Kind of loving it. And I'm going to try to do this while I am uh, looking on the screen here. So everything's going to be upside down for you guys for a minute. Um, while I go through this, illustrations are done by, looks like, Wesley Souza. I, I hope that's pronounced correctly. Again, I'm not sure, and I do apologize for any mispronunciations that I have. Uh, this was done in 2018, and, um, yeah, let's go in into the book here a little bit. So, we have... A little introduction here. Uh, how to use the cards. First connection. Cleansing and charging your deck. Reading spreads. And it goes into single card reading. Saints reading spread. Looks like a four card spread. Mystics reading spread. Also a four card spread. Saints and mystics cross spread. Um, so there's actually like two different decks that go with this. And further suggestions. So... They have here Saint, a person acknowledged as a holy uh, or virtuous and regarded uh, in Christian faith as being in heaven after death. A place dedicated to a 7th century saint used in titles of religious saints and who may be the object of veneration and prayers for intercession. The Epistles of St. Paul. Uh... Number two is informal, a very virtuous kind or patient person. So, yes, we start off with uh, the saints is where we go into first. And we have what it means, the uh, what the card itself means. And we have the saint's name. And it says what they are the patron, patron or patroness saint of uh, such as we're going to go with saint anthony here patron saint of lost articles and hidden secrets feast day is june 13th and it gives a little synopsis of the person the oracle meaning um what it means emotionally spiritually uh consciously and uh how to petition them too this is a really cool deck i'm kind of loving it and an invocation what is what seems is lost, I come to find, with St. Anthony's aid, crossed ties unbind. I kind of love this. So, yeah, you can use these in, definitely in spell work and whatnot. St. Christopher, uh, St. Expedite, St. Francis, Joan of Arc. Yeah, I'm kind of loving this deck already. We're going to go... And it gives um, a little uh, colored 
picture in here of the card. Oh, St. Sebastian. Oof. Anyway, we're, we're going to get get past that. Oh, I got tingles. It gets points for tingling. Um, and then it goes into the mystics. A person who seeks, um, this is the definition that they have here, a person who seeks by contemplation and self-surrender to obtain unity within or absorption absorption into the deity or the absolute or who believes in the spiritual apprehension of truths that are beyond the intellect and again it gives um we have aristotle here as the first one uh we have a meaning the name um philosophy what they're known for a philosopher of logic and life little synopsis emotionally spiritually and consciously what it means and then looks like we have a, uh, and they even have Carl Jung in there. Great. Um, has a little quote by the individual, the mystic. Yeah. So I'm kind of loving that. And uh, yeah. Then we get to an about the author. And can I just say, the author, and I know it's not focusing on there, the author is quite the cutie. Just putting that out there. Um, yeah, so yeah, and you can actually, and I'm going to leave a link in the bottom bar um, to the author, uh, Andreas... Um, I, I am so sorry if I'm in, um, mispronouncing that. I probably am. Um, I'm going to leave a link to their website that is located at the bottom of the page here so you can learn more about them. Um, and some stuff about the illustrator. And then we have acknowledgments and that's the end of the book. So anyway, let's see what this is. Uh, ooh, it even has, uh... Just type. Oh. Okay. Where you can install um, for reading cards. You, you can install the app through the publisher and whatnot. So, anyway. So, again, haven't really dealt with this deck as per usual. Uh, let's first look at the back. And before we even get into that. Let me just say, love that the minimal plastic part um, that uh, certain decks are playing um, with or um, utilizing, let's not say playing with because it sounds disingenuous, but um, minimal plastic, love that. Um, some are using paper and I love that even more. It's more biodegradable and whatnot. So let's look at the cards here for a second let's look at the backs and we're going to separate this into the two decks okay we have the saints and we have the mystics so loving the backs let's look at it with the rider weight smith as a comparison these are enormous enormous cards um yeah they are quite substantial whoops out of focus there or out of the uh screen there quite enormous cards here we have a huge amount of room on each side so probably not a deck that you're going to just put in your in your pocket and go or in your wallet or in your or i mean not in your wallet in your purse in your bag or whatever probably not one that you're going to have for on the go use um I would say that this would be, and I'm going to start with the with the Saints, and let's see if I can get a little bit more focused here. Bear with me, guys. Uh, maybe a little bit less than that. Okay. So, yeah. I kind of love the artwork on, on these. 
I like that they made St. Anthony a young man. Um, but yeah, these would be more of cards that you would use as altar cards. St. Christopher. Um, and down here you have the little keyword of what they are used for or invoked for, or venerated for. Uh, sought after for, however you want to, um, wh wh whichever verbiage you want to use. Joan of Arc. Mm. Powerful woman. I love the stance there. Yeah. So... Yeah, uh, and here we have people of color also represented in here. Uh, male, female, people of color. And also, uh, possibly, uh, LGBT representation, or at least uh, the G is represented by one of them. Uh, St. Martha, authority. That is quite the picture. But yes, we, we do have some um, representation of supposedly a uh, gay saint in here with Saint Sebastian, Santa Muerte. Ooh, I love that. Look at that. Like the artwork is fantastic. Look at the Saint Sebastian. Oh my gosh. Resilience. Hmm. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, St. Sebastian, uh, was supposedly gay. Um, I think I got my saints cor correct on that one. St. Teresa. St. Valentine. Very, very attractive men in the saints. Let me just say, whew. Sorry about that. Hitting the mic there. So... Yes, we have some very attractive saints. Let's see about the mystics. Let's go through the mystics here. We have Aristotle. Oh, let's get uh, Aristotle in the right form there. Carl Jung. And I, I love the like the CGI effect that they have here. Yes. Confucius. The Unfortune, Edgar Casey, Swedenborg, nice. Look at Harry Houdini. Oh, he he is just an attractive man in that one. I want to know who they did to, uh, who they sought out for the pictures because these individuals are just fantastic looking king solomon not the normal depiction that we usually see for king solomon uh a very young version here da vinci marie laveau again we have uh representation from multiple cultures in here and I'm I am there for it Nostradamus Plato Socrates William Blake okay so not a huge amount let me see how many sorry about that there there are 36 cards in total. So, yeah. Now, I don't know if you're supposed to shuffle them together because, well, I haven't read the book. Um, but let's just see if we were to shuffle them together. Not bad at all. Um, let me go ahead and uh, bring these back, or bring the full picture back okay so not that bad at all to shuffle 
Um, I don't see this being one that you sit there and shuffle around like this very often. I think the two decks were meant to be separate. And from the way that it looks on the... Look at that. Ugh. Wonderful looking. Um, I think the way that they're separated, they're, they're meant to be separated. And you shuffle the decks, you know, the separate decks in and of themselves. I would use this more of a way to pull a card and have it on the altar as somebody to... Uh, to derive, derive meaning from, um, to, like in the case of the saints, somebody to petition, I should do it this way, somebody to petition, having this on your altar would be a way of, um, of prayer, of meditation, uh, to petition, whenever dealing with the mystics, to have it there as um, somebody to impart meaning, uh, if they have a meaning to impart to you, um, that's something that I would do. So maybe I want to draw inspiration. So I put Da Vinci, da Vinci up there, Mr. Da Vinci. Maybe I put him on my altar whenever I'm doing something creative or need that creative spark, or maybe I'm uh, doing some writing and I I put this card up uh, with you know at my desk here to do uh, have some creative inspiration so maybe he can bring some inspiration that way um, Saint Martin uh, let's see spiritual pilgrimage if I'm maybe planning a pilgrimage or I need to do like an astral pil pilgrimage of sorts maybe he can help out with that and I have it on my altar during meditation or something like that that's probably the way that I would utilize these cards more than actually using them as uh, as reading cards but I I will give them a shot as reading cards and uh, I will also probably definitely be using them as cards for um for altar cards and inspiration cards and whatnot. As far as the thickness, I'll, I'd say probably about the same thickness as the Rider Waite Smith, the glossy version of the Rider Waite Smith. Um, you know, they are a little glossy, but I kind of love that they're a little glossier because you can have them on, on the altar and you don't really have to worry as much um, if you end up. Uh, having a little splash of water or something on them, you know, I, I would stress trying not to, but if you have that instance where a little water were to splash on them, that it's not going to be the biggest of deals. Again, look at St. Francis. Oh my gosh. I want to know who they had to, to model these because they are fantastic. Usually whenever you see saints, they're like, you know, old and crusty and sometimes gross looking, but yeah, I mean, they, they have some attractive people that did the modeling for this, and I'm there for it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm totally there for it. So, just a quick video as far as the flip-throughs go, but that is the Saints and Mystics reading cards, and uh, I'm kind of loving it. Um, as far as the artwork and the concept behind it and what I could use them for beyond uh, being reading cards, I'm really kind of there for it. So if you have this deck, let me know how it works for you. If you like this deck, if you don't like this deck, is there uh, something you wish they had more of? I kind of wish they had more uh, saints than what they did. Um, I, I wish they had more cards in total than what they did. If they have a continuation of this deck, I would definitely be there for it. Um, of both Saints and Mystics. So, yeah, if you have this deck, have you used it? How does it work for you? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, you know, what would you improve? What would you take away? And um, if you don't have this deck, would you get this deck? Uh, and what would you use it for? Would you use it as a reading deck? Or would you use it as... Um, like an altar card 
uh, type of deck to pull from and gain inspiration from. Uh, let me know by leaving a comment below. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, so, yeah, you don't miss any videos that I put out. I put out videos five days a week. Five, five days a week. Um, so, always check back for those. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.